everyone. I'm Diana Graber, and I'm the author of Raising Humans in a Digital World. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, but I'm really happy to be able to give you this short little presentation about my book. Um, this is actually a condensed version of a longer presentation, so bear with me, and hopefully this will all make sense today. So as you know, I'm the author of Raising Humans in a Digital World. Um, I'm also the founder, and there's the book in Romania. So happy to have it available in your country. Um, I'm also the founder of Cyber Civics, which is a middle school digital literacy curriculum that's taught in schools, not only in the United States, but in schools around the world. Um, and I'm also the founder of CyberWise, which is a um, online site you're welcome to visit. It's with free resources for parents and teachers. All right. so. When I wrote the book, I was really thinking that raising a good human today in a digital world is a lot like building a house. Um, children need a solid foundation of social and emotional skills. They need a sturdy structure of knowledge, and then they'll finally be ready to connect with a wider community of other people. So hopefully as we go through this, that will make a lot more sense. All right. So let's start with this idea of a solid foundation. And when I talk about this, I'm really talking about our youngest of children, because as we know, children are looking at screens so young today. We know that infant screen time has more than doubled to three hours per day. In 1997, our little ones were spending an average of 1.3 hours per day in front of a screen. Today, that's nearly three hours a day. And actually, when I say today, that was pre-coronavirus. Um, early on in the pandemic, there was research done that found that screen time for the youngest of children was really skyrocketing. Nearly half of the respondents said their children were spending about six hours a day watching screens. So the thing about this is we don't really know what the long term impact of our screens are yet upon our little children, but we do know that young kids need face to face interaction with living adults. They need hands on exploration. They need interaction with nature. All of these things are very important to help them have a really strong foundation before they go into the digital world where they might run into strangers and problems and not know how to deal with that. And we're starting to see the results of this um, as kids get older. This is an interesting study that was done here in California that found that children who had extensive screen time when they were young had less ability to read facial expression and human emotions. So super important to help our little ones develop those skills before they get onto screens. Um, okay, so we know that we can't raise children like this with a paper bag over their heads. So I'm gonna tell you what my idea of is of the sturdy foundation of knowledge. Um, and that's what we're gonna talk about next. So here's my house again. <laughs> I believe our house is held up by four pillars of knowledge, knowledge about the online world. And I divide them into reputation, screen time, relationships, and privacy. So probably one of the most important things is to teach kids about online reputation. We know that everything they post online stays online forever. It can be seen by anyone and everyone. Um, there can be huge uh, ramifications of this as they get older. Um, we see headlines all the time about children who lose future opportunities because of things they posted online that were just dumb or insensitive or inappropriate. And we don't want children to have to bear that heavy price. Um, this is an example that happened during coronavirus. We had lockdown here in the United States and these kids ignored that and went to Florida and partied on the beach. And tech billionaire Michael Dell said, hey, I know who you are. We have facial recognition technology. Don't try to come apply for a job at one of my companies because you ha now have a damaged digital reputation. So we don't want to see that happen to any more children, right? So the thing about reputation is there's really no way to get around it because it's important to have one. We know that a lot of employers won't even hire somebody if they can't find them online. So we need to help our children develop this great reputation as they go forward into their lives. All right, pillar number two is always an important one for parents, that screen time. More than half of teens think they spend too much time online and girls think they spend too much time on social media and boys think they spend too much time playing video games. Um, we know that pre-coronavirus, teens were spending about seven hours and 22 minutes using their screens. And for tweens, that's children between eight and 12, they were spending about four hours and 44 minutes per day. 
and that did not include time in school or for school on technology. So during coronavirus, our, our usage of um, screens really went up. Believe it or not, there was a 70% increase in web usage overall globally, 40% increase in WhatsApp, and 30% increase in Facebook usage. The other thing that's interesting, there was a 75% increase in gaming. Um, so while parents usually worry about this, I do want to remind parents that research also shows that social media and video games were really good at providing temporary relief from real life and important social engagement during the pandemic. So there's good and bad with screen time. We just need to help children learn how to manage it. Um, and in malls, they look to us to learn how to use their screens. And unfortunately, parents are spending a lot of time with their screens too, about nine hours per day, same as for teenagers, yet 78% of us think we're good role models. All right, the other thing that we need to teach kids about is their relationships. And when we do that, we need to remember that kids aren't addicted to their phones, they're addicted to each other, and they find their friends and relationships via their phones. Um, what apps are kids using most? Well, right now, TikTok is coming up fast. It just surpassed Instagram as teens' second favorite social media app, but they still list Snapchat as their one number one favorite, and right behind that is Instagram. It has the most engagement. It's the one kids use most, even though they don't say they'd say it's not their very favorite app. So important to know what your kids are are using online. You know, if they're using these apps, you should use them too. Find out what they're all about. Ask your kids what they love about them. And please remember too, if your kids are playing video games, video games are social media too, because it's where kids connect with their friends, especially boys when they're playing things like. Uh, the new one is called Among Us, or one that you're probably more familiar with is Fortnite or Twitch even. So this is where kids are connecting with their friends. Um, unfortunately, there's some foul language and some bullying. So again, be aware of what your kids are doing on their games. And then finally, it's important to teach them about privacy. We know that everything they use, these social media apps, these games, even apps they use for school are collecting their personal information and creating profiles on our children when they're very young. Um, the other thing is kids are not protected when they go online before that minimum age of use, which in most places here in the United States is 13 years of age. Unfortunately, we know that three quarters of children between 10 and 12 have social media accounts because they're making up fake ages. So super important to protect them when they're young. We don't want that personal information collected from such young children. The other thing it's important to tell your kids that even when they start using social media and make their accounts private, they're not really private because were anyone to Google them, their face, their bio picture and their bio words are, are public. So anyone can see that even if their account is private. All right, so that's a really quick overview of the pillars of knowledge. The book goes into much greater detail and all of that good stuff that's helpful to you and to your kids to know about as they start engaging with the digital world. Um, because really in my dream world, everyone has this kind of knowledge and then they're able to engage with this wider, wonderful community online. Because we know the online world has so many good things to offer. We want our kids to use technology to maintain safe and healthy relationships and to craft a digital reputation and to open doors for future opportunities to learn new things and to collaborate with others. So I'm really hoping that my book will help you. Um, Again, it's full of good information. I, um, if you go to my website or look at the website URL there down below, Raising Humans book, um, there is a free discussion guide that goes along with the book because I hope that communities will read it together, talk about the topics in the book and come to common agreement so that we can all raise good humans in a digital world. So enjoy your event. Thank you so much for including me and um, please reach out if you have any questions. Thank you, bye-bye.